Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Stuart here, coming to you again from Madrid, Spain. Today, I think in this vlog, I'll talk about whether Spain is a safe country to live in, um, and more or less, you know, general things associated to uh, personal security and also maybe legal security as well, if you're thinking about buying a house. Okay. Okay, so the question is today whether Spain is a safe country to live in. Now, I can only talk from my own personal experience, and I'm going to say that after nearly 18 years of living here in uh, Madrid, or in the Madrid community for a long time as well, or even in Madrid City, I've never ever had a problem with any type of crime. Now I'm going to touch wood because I understand that that can change tomorrow and I'm not you know so naive as to think that Madrid is a crimeless city because you know it isn't. But it's not as bad as uh, some people would you know make you think. And what I mean by that is you know the security companies um, of course, if you read the newspapers and if you, you know, watch the television, they're always, going to, they're always going to go for that sensationalist side and they're going to exacerbate the, the, the crime. But, as I said, from my point of view and in my personal opinion, Spain is a safe country. Um, if you live in a, in a house, which is what I do, you might need to have some type of security system. I'm not going to say that you won't. Uh, we, for example, have bars on our windows, uh, which I think also could be a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, for example, in Australia, people don't normally have bars on their windows. Some people obviously have alarms and things like that, but I mean, I don't think bars are absolutely necessary. But it's one of those things that, I mean, you know, when you buy a house, somebody comes around and they convince you to put these things on. You see everybody else has them on as well. So, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Um, when you're in a big city like Madrid, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, there's, there is crime. I mean, there's pickpockets, uh, you know, there's, there's bag snatchers, you know, there's all of that type of stuff that you're going to get in every European city. It doesn't matter where you are in Europe, that's going to happen to you. Probably anywhere in the world nowadays, you're going to get your bag snatchers, your pickpockets, people like that. I've never had my wallet stolen. Um, in fact, I've never had anything stolen. My car's never been broken into either, so probably I'm, I'm lucky in that sense as well, but, you know, as I said before, I don't get the perception that, you know, Madrid is an overly dangerous city. Barcelona could be different because there's a lot more tourists in Barcelona. And I think it's all to do with um, the tourist areas. So if you're in the center of Madrid in places like Puerta del Sol, um, Gran Vía, obviously there's going to be a concentration of people, there's going to be a concentration of criminals. And if you are a tourist, uh, you know, just go for the normal precautions. Don't walk around with expensive cameras and, you know, expensive watches on and all that type of thing because you just make yourself a target. Now, another aspect of uh, Spain that I consider to be very safe is when you're out at night. The big Spanish cities are normally full of people, which which makes them, in my opinion, quite safe. And there's not really a lot of violence associated with alcohol here, here either. This motorcycle here trying to squeeze through. Can't do it. Bad luck, mate. So the drinking, the drinking and nightlife culture, there's not a lot of violence, or there's practically no violence associated with that at all. Yeah, sure, you get a few fights late at night, but you don't get the same levels of violence that you do 
let's say where I come from Australia or what I've seen in the UK as well I don't know what the States is like maybe it's you know similar I think I don't know whether it's just me but I get the impression that um, in the English-speaking countries people go out to drink and a lot of people go out to fight there's a, like a fighting type mentality that you have to you know take your shirt off after a few drinks in a bar and you know start a fight with somebody I mean uh, I see this all the time in, in, in Australia you know people just aggressive when they go out and drink there's no there's no there's no there's none of that same aggressive behavior from people here I mean it's incredible I've never ever ever had any type of aggro in a bar nightclub anything restaurants especially I'll use the example of a, of a restaurant before I came to live here back in the late 90s in Perth Perth's where I come from I was at a restaurant and with my girlfriend we were speaking Spanish and this girl comes up to us and starts talking she was you know as pissed as you could be for that time of the night it's about eight o'clock and she was absolutely smashed and she starts talking to us and then of course my girlfriend didn't speak very good English so I had to sort of explain to her in Spanish and then she starts on then she starts ranting about you know how can we be in a restaurant enjoying ourselves when there's people uh, in your country and she obviously was talking about Guatemala or one of these you know impoverished places in Central America when there's people starving and can't even you know get enough to eat well, what are we doing enjoying ourselves at a restaurant when there's impoverished people and I mean uh, and she hopped up and pushed the table on top of us that was at 8 o'clock in a restaurant in Perth or 8 30 without a word of a lie I've never seen anything like that here at all. People go out, they drink alcohol, they enjoy themselves, which is the purpose of drinking alcohol. You have a couple of drinks, you laugh, you smile, you have a good time, and that's it. There's none of the aggressive um, nature. There's none of this aggressiveness that's uh, associated with uh, drinking in Australia. And again, I'll say the UK because I went to the UK a few years ago, and we were in a small town called... Um, Stony Stratford, I think it was, which is up near Milton Keynes. And 11 o'clock when the pub shut, there was at least two people fighting in the street. And another couple of people had smashed windows and it was just a, it was just a, this violence associated with alcohol, it's incredible. But here, almost nothing. In fact, you'd probably be pretty hard pushed to find anybody in, in, you know, an English speaker in Madrid that's had a problem, you know, at a bar. I have seen people aggressive, and normally they're people on holiday, and they bring that, you know, aggressive drinking culture here as well, because alcohol in Spain is very cheap. You can get drunk, or you can drink a lot for a very low price and you know people abuse that and they end up you know falling back into the old traps of what they do at home but apart from that you know the average Spanish person you know very very calm when it comes to drinking so there's none of that violence as well women as well I mean I can't speak for women what it's like to be a woman in a city like Madrid yeah there's you know you're gonna get your wolf whistles and all of those type of things but you see you know women walking around the streets perfectly uh, safe you know late late times of the, uh, you know late late times of the day they don't seem to be uh, overly worried or looking over their shoulder as they would be in other cities which is good and I suppose the other thing you have to look at is from a security point of view is whether your investments are going to be safe if you decide to you know invest money in Spain if you're going to buy property, um, you know, all of those type of things. And um, uh, the answer is yes. Um, you know, there have been some problems over the years with uh, 
legal security regarding investments. There was a, a renewable energy law that was changed and a lot of people lost a lot of money, uh, that, you know, people that had invested in that. But basically if you buy property and, and you do the due diligence and all of those things that you should do before you buy property, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thanks for uh, watching the vlog. Remember to leave a comment below if you have one and uh, I'll see you in the next vlog. Hasta luego.